Hi, welcome back once again to the carpenter shop. Here we are taking a moment to see how we might grow our lives and our faith just a little bit closer to God and grow up just a little bit in the carpenter shop. That's where Jesus spent a lot of time as a kid, I'm sure, hanging out with his earthly father, Joseph. I'm sure he learned how to use the tools that were there. I'm sure that Joseph uh, grabbed him by the hand sometimes and helped him shape and do some things. And I'm sure that Jesus was probably a quick learner. I, I don't know why I think that, but I think he was. I mean, after all, he is God. And he probably was able to do some things. And I think Joseph sometimes maybe just smiled and been amazed as he remembered and was reminded as Jesus did something, exactly who it was that he had been placed in charge of taking care of. I think those would have been the cool times. One day, someday, maybe we'll get a chance um, to look back on that. In 1 John chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, we read these verses. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. You ever stood admiring a painting in a museum, amazed at the masterpiece that you're looking at? Some of you are artsy types, and you really enjoy walking through museums and looking at paintings. You know, for me, um, I kind of more of a comic book guy myself, but hey, you know, uh, it, again, art is art, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But you know what? You might be looking at it painting on the wall in the museum and think it's a priceless painting and it could be a fake. You know why? Because of Eric Hebron. Eric Hebron is a man who died in 1996, but he created over a thousand drawings and paintings and sold them for vast sums of money to museums and collectors who either wanted something that looked very close to the original masterpiece or sometimes they thought they were actually buying an original. He used paper and paints from years gone by, and his work was so good it was nearly impossible to detect. Now, he would be defensive and he would tell you, and I quote, I'm not a crook, forgeries should be enjoyed for what they are rather than being questioned for what they're not. <laughs> uh, well, that probably made him feel a lot better, but at the end of the day, if you thought you had a masterpiece on your hand and you had a forgery, he had deceived you. Um, we live in a world where deception seems to be commonplace. Um, false philosophies, fake values, fake news, fake opinions, um, things that um, are half-truths, um, social media posts that perpetuate a lie or a myth, um, something that's taken out of context and um, seems to take on a life of its own. Uh, people who uh, want to deceive you by rewriting history or misaligning truth. Deception often trips up believers in their journey of faith. But it's hard to deceive a follower who spends time in the Word of God. It's hard to deceive someone who spends time with Jesus, getting close to Him. It's hard to deceive someone who's growing up and growing into faith and becoming closer to God. In other words, growing up in the carpenter shop. See, I have a gnawing feeling that when Jesus was talking about my yoke is easy and my burden is light, I have a gnawing feeling that he learned to make a yoke for oxen in the carpenter shop with Joseph. And when he made the promise, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, I think he made a yoke that fit just perfect for whoever had hired him to make it. I think his workmanship was good. I think it was a real deal. I have a gnawing feeling that Joseph was the type of carpenter that when he made something, he tried to do it with excellence and people would look at it and go, oh, that, that's by Joseph. And then Jesus very well could have learned that same excellence from his father here on earth. And I wonder how many people had something that was sitting in their home or something that they were using that had been created by Joseph and his son as they knew him, Jesus. Would you like to have one of those originals somewhere on your shelf? See, don't be deceived. There is the real thing, there is the real deal, and then there's the other stuff. And Jesus is the real deal. And you can tell because of the excellence, because of the beauty, and because of the love. Don't get tripped up. Don't let those that would deceive you convince you that it's okay to be deceived. It's not. And hold on to truth, because truth is what sets you apart. It's what makes you close to God, Jesus said. I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by me.
you stay close to him. And as you do, you'll continue to grow deeper roots and you'll keep growing up. I'll join you again for another trip through the carpenter shop.